Hi, Yogurt and Eker Hacker version 2. What do they have in common? Well, despite them both tasting like shit when you put mayonnaise on them, both are controversial and both have letters, I guess? Yes to all of those, but mostly that both of these things grow on you with age. I still f***ing hate yogurt, but hey, it's still better than heroin. Anyway, these are the top 10 levels that grew on me. I've decided to give up on smoke. Please respect my family. <laughs> Weed. <laughs> Straight on to the weird stuff. This is a level that I used to not be a big fan of. This drug fuel mania did grow me over the years. Mainly due to the many small details that are ever present in this My Little Pony Dimension spam level. Like the song's bitch going up and down ship based on the elevation of the aviation vehicle. Moreover is the pre-drop having these flashes that pretty much match when you should click in theory at least. On top of that is my growing appreciation for levels that do a lot with very little. If there is one overarching theme of all of these levels, it's probably that. And that's not even to mention how the level crescendos at the end, with the last part tying the level together in a unique way that I'd never seen before. Going from a mellow weed fest to this rehab center of sorts. It even features this intense ass slow build up into it. Straight fly. Due to my sarcastic inclusion of Elite Z Rebirth in many conversations about levels that people have any form of respect for, this one has massively grown on me over the years. Though I can see this easily being the worst crazy man level, I just can't get over the fact that this level exists in the first place. Plus the things that I used to harshly criticize are the points I admire the most nowadays, mainly the cute mazes of Satan's asshole. The ending also just gets better the more I think about how it's just... Yeah, it doesn't make sense. It feels just like the original level, you know, messy, stupid, bad, but endlessly full of creatively bad ideas at least. It's like seeing a painter painting a painting of a horrific car crash instead of calling 911, but he's actually doing a challenge where he has to finger paint using watercolors. If you relate to that, like and subscribe today. Of course this level is still shit, cause come on, where the hell am I going? Ah yes, Vor. Human munching aside, Innards is a level that upon its release I didn't care about whatsoever. I'm not gonna lie. I thought it was, you know, messy, poorly themed, unpolished, which I was alright about. This level just has a vibe similarly to the other levels I just discussed that just carries home the trophy for me. I felt conflicted about this one for years, but I can finally say that I do in fact like the eyeballs in the background. Coloring is quite unique in this one. Never seen the canned meat look being pulled out for a level. Pink meat slap aside, this is a level that I think takes its biggest weaknesses and turns them into strengths. Similarly to the wall of flesh in Terraria, to be honest. I'm still very confused about what this part means, though. Wait, why did the level get hacked? Viruses used to be a very big problem, but with how lonely Gen Z apparently is, I think having some other creature in your life would help out most of us. I'm not saying this organism needs to, you know, commit genocide or anything, but at the same time, it's not necessarily a bad thing either. It's a great white flag. I was really on the early bandwagon for this level sucking ass. I also used to think that pineapple on pizza was okay, so I've grown a lot as a person. I now love pineapple on pizza. Killbot is a level that grows on pretty much everybody that isn't a socialist, so naturally it would grow on me too. This is the quintessential memory level to most people that hate the color purple, including me. Though I do appreciate the mixture of blue and red more than my fellow murder AI enjoyers, I still think Killbot is the most iconic and classic memory level in the game. The theming is Killbot's biggest strength, besides committing heinous cybercrimes. It really feels like you're losing your personal data while watching or playing in the Matrix, especially nearing the end. Oh my god. They hacked your body. Melanoma is a level by Voltat that has theming of a very nasty wound. I used to think this damaged piece of art was very overrated, mostly due to me not being familiar with Voltat's style. Though his style of spawning millions of flying vermin that will give you various diseases that only a witch doctor can pronounce should be a big fat mess, somehow the elevated maggots really add to the theming of Death and Decay rash portrays. It really does feel like you're some kind of scientist crawling through a rotting corpse, which is the same experience I had with your mom last night. Just like the computer virus, Rash has become pretty well regarded by people who like clicking their mouse at 140 decibels. That doesn't mean you would enjoy it, but it's still a good sign if nothing else. I do know that this orb spam rubs me the wrong way though. 
Yay, time for a clean level. It washed its hands. This is such a fantastically aged design level. This is something I really only realized when I beat its younger brother and asked him for the Netflix password. Good choice, by the way, because the most recent season of Slugma Adventures was on there. Hell yeah. Macabre is just a level I used to dislike, or macabre, however the f*** you want to pronounce it. This is probably because a lot of people said it sucked dick to play, so I obliviously assumed that this means that the entire level is bad, even decoration-wise, which I've learned is absolutely not the case. Sometimes both can really suck. I think this level grew on me more so because I grew my own taste in levels and didn't just dick write shitty opinion YouTubers anymore, which I would strongly suggest everybody do, by the way. Don't listen to me. About the level itself isn't much to say, but that doesn't mean it's bad. It's just super clean. <laughs> <laughs> you got Devil Vortex rules. <laughs> Even disregarding the saw blades, Devil Vortex is still interesting, contrary to popular belief. It has Minecraft mobs that will haunt the hell out of you. Plus, it's hacked. It's hacked. It's hacked. There's no point in talking about how it plays, but I will anyway because I have this level in three runs. The pre-drop is annoying and inconsistent, the drop is fun until this stupid ball click makes you want to rip your kidneys out and mold them into a middle finger, the great part is the worst shit you'll ever play, the part after is muscle memory hell, then there is a frame perfect and that's double vortex for you. Quite the experience. It is such a choice to make a level red instead of doing anything interesting in your life. The reason this grew on me is quite superficial, because I've grown to like dumb levels. Similarly to the way I've learned to love Elite Z Rebirth, this level just makes me laugh. And at the end of the day, like you all know, it's not about the destination, it's about the saw blaze we placed along the way. Thank you, Stalin, for the beautiful quote. Wait, what the f*** happened? Why are there e-girls in my DMs? Claustrophobia Incarnate is a very controversial piece of GD history nowadays, similarly to our brother over there. But that doesn't take away from its impact. It influenced pretty much everything that came after it, whether directly or indirectly. Of course, stuff like Wazu and Kuzureta were very directly influenced by Koareta, and so they definitely would not be here without it. But the unique structuring and color usage has wormed its way into every generic level creator's toolkit, which means it was probably a brilliant idea in the first place. Because as you know, you will never ever steal homework from that dyslexic kid. I used to not get the hype behind this level, but I can see why people like it nowadays. I do like it myself, but I think Koareta is outredded by Kuzureta, for example. So yes, a finely aged piece of Geometry Dash history that even has a cool transition. I hate to say this, I really do, but Rust is indeed a quality level. I really hated this one when it first got showcased, mostly because I didn't see what was going on or what it was going for in any way, shape or form. Though I still think this is overrated as hell and the ending looks like ass, I will admit that the things I used to dislike about Rust are mostly things that I do like now. The simplicity never seemed to interest me back in the day until recently. The gameplay I've always admired, with the timings being unique, innovative and most of all fun as hell to watch. But there's one thing that I still agree with myself and then that's that the second half is weak as hell compared to the first half, which hasn't changed whatsoever. Like, come on, if you're gonna copy-paste the block design like 5,000 times, do a good block design instead of Slope McGee over here. I do love the way this level transitions into the shit part, though. I think it's very clean. Yep, this is the biggest one for me. A level that I used to think was like a 2 or a 3 out of 10 at best is now one of my favorite levels in the entire game. Partly due to it being very scary. This is such an atmospheric level that, while hard carried by the song, still has a lot of interesting parts in it. The level drags on, but that's to its benefit instead of its deficit for once. The atmosphere and the emptiness really gets to you when you watch this. I used to think that was something to be scoffed at, to be hated, but my brain cells have now finally started functioning. There aren't many levels that can effortlessly build up a landscape full of life without there being either life or a landscape, but this is one of them, this is like the only one. And it's also a very good jump scare, so that's bonus points. So there you have it, quality over forgettability, as I like to call it. There will always be more levels that get added to this list, but that's for next time. <laughs>